I never uh, thought, and I bet uh, most of my teachers uh, in high school would be quite surprised to hear that uh, I've been elected uh, to Congress. I uh, started off playing sports as a kid and saw that as my path uh, to college. No one in my family had ever gone to college before, so just getting to college was kind of a, a dream for me uh, and my family. And uh, played soccer in college, and it was actually an injury uh, in college while playing soccer uh, that forced me to think about uh, a world outside of sports. And I went to Capitol Hill in 2001, worked there that summer, and during that summer internship experience, uh, I found that I loved being at the center uh, of the democracy for the free world that uh, allows you to help people and make a difference in lives. Uh, you know, I did come home and serve locally though. I I'd served on a local arts commission and then a planning commission, worked as a prosecutor and as a city council member and uh, kind of uh, you know, inadvertently, unintentionally uh, found uh, this office. But uh, when I saw the opportunity to serve, uh, I leapt through the window because uh, the idea of serving all the people I grew up with uh, and back in Washington, D.C., where I first fell in love with public service uh, seemed quite worthy. First, you know, it took an education, and I, I knew I wanted to go to law school because my dad was a police officer, and uh, he always told me that he wanted me to also uh, work in public safety, but he didn't want me to do the backbreaking work that he had to do as an officer. He wanted me uh, to try and use my mind, as he would always tell me, uh, because he'd actually broken his back uh, as a police officer. And so uh, he said, go to school, study to become a prosecutor, and then uh, you know, work in the courtroom. And so I, I focused uh, like a laser uh, on getting right to law school. I went right from college and then went right from law school uh, to the district attorney's office uh, in Alameda County. And you know, I don't believe that to serve the public you have to uh, necessarily go to law school. Uh, you don't even have to have uh, a college degree. I think you need post high school training, whether it's a technical school, vocational school, uh, or you know, if you want to uh, be a doctor going to medical school or uh, studying and uh, being able to teach others, you would need uh, different graduate degrees. But uh, I believe just having uh, a sense of the world outside of your own community uh, is an education in and of itself. And going away uh, for college to the Washington, D.C. area uh, certainly, I think, uh, gave me a better perspective. Uh, I would first say, uh, don't fix yourself on a certain seat. Uh, rather, fix yourself on uh, what problem can you solve. I, I think too many uh, young people uh, I've seen, uh, you know, they really focus and have a, a seat in mind or an office in mind. And I think the danger there is that there, there's no certain path to any of these offices. Uh, but if you are too focused on uh, an office, uh, if you don't make it, I think you could uh, believe that you don't have any capacity or way to serve when that's not really the case. I think you should, you know, find issues and problems, challenges in the community and go out and take them on. And you'll find uh, that if you want to make a difference uh, in education, you know, you could be on the school board uh, or you could uh, be on a local uh, commission that works on education. You could work in the nonprofit uh, area or you could even work uh, for a corporation that does a lot of community work uh, in education. But I, I think really think about what problems you care about that need solving and address it that way and you'll find the right office. There's, you know, th th this isn't about what offices we hold, it's about uh, what people uh, we help. How do I gather information as to how I'm going to vote? Well, first, you know, I have a core set of principles uh, that I operate from, which is one, you know, I is this uh, something that helps the most amount of people and hurts uh, the fewest? But, you know, I was a prosecutor, uh, and uh, for seven years I had to present to juries uh, information to hold individuals accountable. And, if I had a, a criminal case that used DNA, well, I'm not a scientist. Uh, however, uh, I was able to bring in scientists who could explain it to the jurors. And I treat this job uh, just the same. I, I go to the experts and I have them explain it to me and then I will use what I learned from them to explain it to my constituents and to explain it to any colleagues uh, that I'm trying to persuade. So uh, no one is expected to know it all, but I think you have to be curious enough and resourceful enough to be able to know who to go to uh, and then listen uh, to those individuals. When I think about you know, moments that I'll, I'll never forget, uh, yesterday we elected a new Speaker uh, of the House. Uh, and you know, this is something that only happens uh, every uh, couple of years, sometimes uh, even longer. This is uh, something that's so special. Uh, we're transferring power in our country and not a shot was fired. Uh, and you know, that really resonated with me. I'll never forget that. 
uh, that you know you could look at a hundred countries across the world where uh, if you transfer power uh, you know to an office like the Speaker of the House uh, there may be violence there may be tanks in the public square uh, but despite how contentious and gridlocked our Congress is we still transferred power from one person to another and so I think that says a lot about our country and it's something that is important for us uh, to always step back and reflect upon.